Toyota has a major problem. And not only is this a ding to the stellar reliability reputation that Toyota has long had, but it's going to also cost Toyota a lot of money. Let me explain. Toyota has recently been refreshing their lineup across both Toyotas as well as Lexuses, and while there are many good things that come along with a refresh and new vehicle generations, like updated interior, new styling, a fresh look, the downside is, is that along with major refreshes, which is exactly what Toyota has been doing, potential issues can also arise, like quality control issues and recalls. In fact, there is a long-standing belief across seasoned automotive buyers that you shouldn't buy the first year in a refreshed or new generation car, because this is the year where cars, even from the most reliable automakers, are most likely going to have quality control issues, recall problems, and just kinks that haven't been worked out yet. You can view it sort of like a test dummy of sorts. If you buy the first year of a new generation, you are in some ways a test dummy for how the durability of the vehicle will stand to everyday use. And for some Toyota customers, they are finding out that their relatively new vehicles aren't withstanding and upholding to everyday use very well. In 2022, the Lexus LX and the Toyota Tundra were completely redesigned, not only with new body style and interior features, but also with new engines. The second generation of the Tundra, which ran from 2007 to 2021, had a 4-liter V6 option and a 5.7-liter V8 option. In 2022, with the release of the third-generation Tundra, Toyota switched to a 3.5-liter twin-turbo V6 and a twin-turbo V6 hybrid. The Lexus LX made the switch to a 3.4-liter twin-turbo V6 as well. Well, in June of this year, about two years after the release of these two vehicle refreshes, Toyota announced a recall of nearly 100,000 Toyota Tundras and 3,500 Lexus LX SUVs because of an issue related to an engine losing power while driving. And while the recall was officially announced in June of this year, Toyota actually didn't have a fix for this recall until just recently. And within the last week, the fix has been announced and the resolution is to simply replace the over 100,000 engines that are found in these cars. Now, Toyota has stated that the issue seems to be caused by debris from the manufacturing process being left inside the engine, where it can lead to banging or popping sounds, the engine not running properly, or in some cases, the engine stalling altogether. Now, it is unclear exactly how much this recall is going to cost Toyota, but it will no doubt cost millions of dollars. And while this is the first time in a very long time that Toyota has been hit with a recall like this, this, these types of major engine issues and recalls happen with automakers truthfully more than they really should. One of the largest examples of this type of major engine recall that resulted in a just total engine replacement comes from Hyundai, and this is actually one that I have personal experience with, and in my opinion, this ultimately became a good thing for Hyundai owners. Hyundai has in the last few years recalled hundreds of thousands of vehicles due to a defective rod bearing causing premature engine failure. In fact, a number of years ago, I bought a Hyundai for Turo that had this issue, but at the time I was unaware of it. We bought this car, we had fixed it up, and we were going on one last test drive with this vehicle before we finally decided to put it on Turo. And funny enough, for that one last test drive, I decided to take this car to go pick up my at the time six week old niece from my sister's house. It was a 45 minute drive so I thought it would be a perfect time to test this vehicle but unbeknownst to me this car had the rod bearing issue that Hyundai had previously recalled and on our way home on the highway this car completely died due to engine failure whenever I had a six week old in the backseat of my car. We ended up having to get the car towed to Hyundai. I had to wait at a Walmart parking lot with the six week old baby until I could have somebody pick me up and it was a complete disaster. But everything turned around whenever we ended up learning about the rod bearing recall, we ended up getting the engine completely replaced by Hyundai for 100% free. And to this day, this car is still running on Turo and it does it extremely well despite the fact that it's becoming a high mileage vehicle because the engine is still relatively new. And since running into this issue with this Hyundai Sonata, we have since purchased another Hyundai Sonata, multiple Hyundai Tucsons, and a Hyundai Elantra all of which either are cars that qualify for this engine replacement or they've already had their engines replaced under this recall. But Honda has also had similar types of recalls in the past, and I'm sure Toyota will not be the last manufacturer to have this either. Now, what this means for Toyota long-term, truthfully, probably isn't that much. The Toyota Tundra and the Lexus LXs that are affected by this will get fixed, and that will be that. But it does bring up the valuable question of what does this mean for new generation vehicles that Toyota has recently released or that they have in the pipeline for the coming 
coming months. For example, the Toyota Tacoma, Toyota Land Cruiser, and the Toyota 4Runner, as well as the Lexus GX. These are all vehicles that have either recently had or are about to have a refresh and are about to be released to the general public. And these are cars that have had massive redesigns, not just aesthetically, but also mechanically as well. And I do wonder if this is going to mean that maybe these owners of these new vehicles that are coming out or have just come out will also run into similar issues in a year or two. And will this issue with the Tundras and the Lexus LX, will it give these future buyers of these other products less confidence in Toyota for this first year of the newest generation? And truthfully, I think that that's a question that nobody really knows the exact answer to. But I do think that this most recent recall with Toyota brings up a really frustrating and important topic regarding recalls with automakers. And that's the fact that it feels as though recalls, especially major recalls, are happening left and right with automakers more and more. We of course have this recall with Toyota and Lexus that that's hitting cars right now. But in addition to this engine recall, Toyota also has an airbag recall that's affecting the Grand Highlander and the Lexus TX, which is affecting 145,000 cars. Kia has 460,000 Kia Tellurides recalled due to a fire risk. And this is after Hyundai had hundreds of thousands, Tucson, Sonatas, and more recalled due to a fire risk last year through the beginning of this year with a recall with no remedy. I had three cars affected by this. And this recall has affected more than 3.4 million vehicles, most of which haven't been fixed as of spring of this year. Earlier this year, the Ford Bronco and the Ford Escape were recalled for a fire risk as well. The Jeep Renegade currently has a recall with no remedy. Tesla just announced a recall of over 1.8 million vehicles due to a hood latch assembly failing and causing the hood to potentially fly open. And according to Carfax, the number of do not drive or park outside recalls have increased by 65% in the last year, with 4.2 million cars affected by either a do not drive or a park outside recall. It just feels as though recalls are absolutely hammering the automotive industry, and you have to ask yourself, are these recalls due to the fact that safety standards are getting more strict and thus recalls are easier to get? Or is it because the quality of these vehicles is truly declining and these issues that really should have been caught just simply aren't and thus it results in a massive recall? And I do think that this recall issue does give consumers, or at least it should give consumers, a bit of a pause whenever it comes to buying a new car of trying to figure out, okay, not only do we have to worry about long-term reliability, but we also have to worry about recalls, quality standards, and more. And truthfully, I think that these are issues that the consumer just shouldn't be as worried about because automakers should be catching these problems before the car rolls up the assembly line. This is especially true if you intend to use your car for gig platforms like Turo, for example, where you can't even rent a car that has an open recall, and having a car that has a recall with no remedy completely screws over the car buyer. Regardless, this is not a good look for Toyota, and this is a frustrating issue that seems to be plaguing automakers everywhere. And while Toyota is one of the most recently affected one, it certainly isn't the only brand that's affected either. But like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it, so make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.